This is Twit. Okay, we haven't checked in on a Microsoft Patch Tuesday for a while. Last week's update was notable for its quiet inclusion of a mitigation for what the industry's DNS server vendors have described as, quote, the worst attack on DNS ever discovered, unquote. It seems, it seems to have slipped under much of the rest of the industry's radar, but not this podcast's, since it could have been used to bring down the entire Internet. It is today's topic, which we will, of course, be getting back to later. But first, we're going to take a look at Patch Tuesday and then answer some questions and have some interesting deep dives. Um, the inter- the you know, DNS attack didn't happen. So the Internet is still here. Thus, Microsoft doesn't get off the hook for fixing another round of problems with its products. Last week's patches included fixes for a pair of zero days that were being actively exploited, even though they were not the worst from a CVSS rating standpoint. That, that goes to a different pair, which earned 9.8 CVSS ratings. Overall, Last Tuesday, Microsoft released patches to repair a total of 73 flaws against its, you know, across its product lineup. Of those 73, five are critical, 65 are important, and the last three have moderate severity. Fixed separately were 24 flaws in Edge, which had been repaired in the intervening month between now and last month's updates. The two zero days are a Windows smart screen security bypass carrying a CVSS of only 7.6 and an Internet shortcut files security feature bypass with a CVSS of 8.1. The first one of those two, the Windows smart screen security feature bypass, allows malicious actors to inject their own code into smart screen to gain code execution, which could then lead to data exposure. The lack of system availability could also happen or both. Now, the reason it was only rated at 7.6 is that for the attack to work, the bad guys needed to send the targeted user a malicious file and convince them to open it. So it wasn't like, you know, just receive a packet and it's the end of the world, which actually is what happened with this DNS business we'll get to the other zero day uh, permitted unauthenticated attackers to bypass displayed security checks by sending a specially crafted file to a targeted user but once again the user would somehow need to be induced to take the action of clicking on the link that they'd received so not good was being actively exploited in the field both of these were zero days being used still this one rated an 8.1 and it's fixed as of last tuesday the five flaws deemed critical in order of increasing criticality were a windows hyper v denial of service vulnerability that got itself a score of 6.5 so critical but not a high cvss the windows pragmatic general multicast which is pgm remote code execution vulnerability scored a 7.5 microsoft dynamics business central slash nav information disclosure vulnerability came in with an 8.0 and finally the two biggies both getting a 9.8 to few people's surprise we have another Microsoft Exchange server elevation or privilege vulnerability and um, a Microsoft Outlook remote code execution vulnerability. Both of those 9.8s, both of those easy to do, both of those now resolved as of last week. A senior staff engineer at Tenable, the security firm, said in a statement that this was very likely to be exploited and that exploiting the vulnerability could result in the disclosure of a targeted user's 
NTLM, you know, NT Landman, version 2 hash, which could be relayed back to a vulnerable exchange server in an NTLM relay or pass the hash attack to allow the, auth- the attacker to authenticate as the targeted user. So it was a way of getting into Microsoft Exchange Server through this 9.8, you know, basically a backdoor vulnerability. Um, and believe it or not, last Tuesday's updates also fixed 15. <laughs> I had to like, what, really? Yes, 15 remote code execution flaws in Microsoft's WDAC Olay DB provider for SQL Server that an attacker could exploit by tricking an authenticated user into attempting to connect to a malicious SQL Server via uh, Windows Olay DB. So 15 remote code execution flaws. It must be that someone found one and said, wow, let's just keep looking. And the more they looked, the more they found. So Microsoft fixed all of those. Um, and rounding off the patch batch, as I mentioned, is a mitigation, not a total fix, for a 24-year-old fundamental design flaw, not an implementation flaw, a design flaw, in the DNSSEC spec, which, had they known of it, bad guys could have used to exhaust the CPU resources of DNS servers to lock them up for up to 16 hours after receiving just a single DNS query packet. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below.